In this video, we're looking at a Windows system, a computer with Windows on it, and you're wanting to either add an additional hard drive, or perhaps you already have a second hard drive inside the computer. And on that second drive, we're going to install Linux, and we're going to do it two different ways, depending on the uh, setup. So whether you've got an existing hard drive or you're adding an additional hard drive to the system, I'm going to cover both scenarios in this video. Let's have a look at our Windows setup before we make any changes. Let's have a look at our disk setup in Windows. We have disk zero with the C drive on it. And this is our new hard drive, our new disk that we've actually just put inside the machine. So this is a physical disk and it's called disk number one. So you can see it's unallocated, there's nothing on it. It's theoretically brand new out of the shop. We're going to install Linux Mint onto this drive. And there's a, a number of options that I'm going to go through. The first one's going to be just installing it onto this drive. And the second scenario that I'm going to cover is if this drive's currently, say, D drive in your Windows system, and it's most likely going to be a lot bigger than 60 gigabytes, but we'll assume you've been using it to store extra data on in your Windows system. And so our second scenario we're going to cover is installing Linux onto this without uh, destroying all the data on it in which case we'll be putting a petition up the end here somewhere for Linux Mint and installing into that petition. Let's get started. And here we are booting up the live USB of Linux Mint. And we're gonna have a bit of a discussion when we get to the desktop. Before we install, we'll go through a couple of bits and pieces. We'll have a quick look at the system before we install it. Before we install Linux Mint, we're going to have a look at disks. And we can see here this 130 gigabyte hard drive has Windows on it. You can see that it's SDA. And it says down here as well, SDA. So that's the Windows system petition there. And this is where Windows C drive is. See they're 128 gigabytes. We can also see that they're NTFS. Okay. This is our second drive, which is 64 gigabytes. And it's free space, so there's nothing on there. This is where we're going to install Linux onto this second drive. So we'll start the installer. We can continue. That's good, so I can continue again. I'm not gonna select that, but I recommend that you do. So let's continue. As expected, this computer currently has Windows 10 on it. What would you like to do? We can see it's defaulted to install Linux Mint alongside Windows 10. If we go down that path, it's going to install Linux Mint onto the C drive and not onto the second hard drive that we want to put it on. So we'll choose something else, and we're going to continue. Here we can see SDA, which we know is the Windows disk, and there we can see the, the system petition there, and there's the actual Windows install there, or the C drive, as Windows calls it, and they're both NTFS. SDB is the second drive and we can see here that it's 64,000 megabytes or about 64 gigabytes. If it doesn't show up here, 
as free space. If you just see it there, you'll need to click here, new petition table. There's nothing at all on the drive. So we'll hit new petition table and we're going to continue. Okay, so it's 60 gigs, so now it's it's showing up here as a 60 gig or 64 gigabytes, 64,000 megabytes. Okay, so we have our free space on SDB. Free space. We click the little plus. Uh, we can run with these defaults here. So the only thing that we need to put in here is the mount point, which is the forward slash. We're pretty much doing the same thing as if you went through the installer and just installed Linux Mint onto your computer with no other operating systems or anything present on there. The only thing we're doing different is we're installing onto this second hard drive. So we'll say OK to that. And there it is there, it's going to install Linux Mint onto SDB1, on SDB drive, device for bootloader. So this is where it's going to install the Grub bootloader. And at the moment it's pointing to SDA, which is where Windows is. So what that's going to do, that's going to overwrite the Windows bootloader. And you can do that if you want to. That's pretty much what happens when you install alongside. If we were to go back a couple of steps on the installer, and instead of choosing something else, which is what we're doing now, if we'd chosen the install alongside Windows 10, this is how it would do it. It would install under the C drive alongside Windows 10 here and it would put the bootloader or the grub bootloader onto the SDA, onto the Windows drive as well, which would in fact overwrite the Windows bootloader. And that, that means that if you deleted Linux off the system or something like that, or if grub files, you won't actually be able to boot Windows. I want to leave the Windows drive completely untouched. And so what we're going to do, we're going to change this from SDA to SDB. So there it is there, SDB. So now it's going to install Linux into SDB1. It'll create that partition and put Linux in there. And it's going to put the bootloader onto SDB. The bootloader is going to find when we go through the rest of the install it's actually going to find the Windows 10 and put that into the Grub Boot menu. However, the machine is still set to boot from the motherboard, from the BIOS. The machine's still set to boot off the first drive, which has got Windows on it. So you'll see when we restart the machine, it's going to boot straight back into Windows. Now, if you're using Windows all the time, you'll probably want that. and you can run with that, you can just leave it as it is. And if you want to boot Linux, you can press F2, F8, F10, Escape, Delete, whatever the key is for your motherboard to get to the boot menu. Uh, you can press that key, choose the other drive, SDB, it'll be, it might be drive two, it might be the Samsung 60 gigabyte drive, whatever it's labeled in your BIOS will be what you choose if you want to use Linux. The system's going to be pretty much unchanged as far as turning the computer on when we're finished installing Linux. It's still going to boot to Windows 10 because it's set to to boot from the first hard drive that it finds which is the one with Windows on it. So if we were installing alongside Windows 10 then Grub would overwrite the Windows bootloader. The computer, when you turn it on, will look at the first drive, which is SDA. It'll see Grub, and you'll get the Grub menu for Windows 10 or Linux Mint.
But in our case, we're going to have to press whatever key to bring up the boot menu from the motherboard, from the BIOS, and choose the other disk to boot into Linux, which will actually give us the choice to boot Linux or Windows because Grub will be there and Grub will say, you can boot me here off this disk and there's Linux. And Grub will also see Windows 10 over there and give you that choice. So you can sort of go around the block two ways to get to Windows 10. So we're putting Linux on the second drive. We're putting the bootloader on the second drive. So we're not touching the first drive at all. I actually recommend to disconnect the Windows 10 drive to do an operation like this. But of course that depends on uh, your comfort levels and skill levels, how confident you feel. Uh, I'm doing this in a virtual environment, as you can see here, it says VBox, so that's VirtualBox. But it's the same, my actual computer that I'm doing this on has Windows and Linux on it. And this is the way that I install it on my own system. So if either one of my drives fails, I can still at least boot into the other system. So if my Windows drive dies, I can boot into Linux. My Linux drive dies, I can boot into Windows. And I tell the computer to boot off my Linux drive and I use Grub from there to go to the Windows drive. So this is pretty much exactly as I do it on my own system. So this gives us a little bit of redundancy. And if for whatever reason we want to throw Linux away at a later date, you can just simply disconnect the Linux drive and your computer's exactly as it was before, just with Windows on it. So once again, this is a key, key thing here is to make sure you put the, the Grub bootloader under this under the same drive as Linux. So we're looking good. There's Linux. There's the bootloader on the same drive, SDB. So let's install now. We continue. And if you if you have disconnected your Windows drive to do this and you're installing Linux onto the, the second drive. All you need to do is once you've finished installing Linux, plug your Windows drive back in, boot up to Linux, open the terminal, and you type sudo update-grub, and you'll see that it'll find the Windows 10 system on the other hard drive, and add it to the grub menu, which I'll show a little bit later on in the video. Okay, Melbourne's good for me, so we'll continue. We've given it a name, we've got a username, password, etc. So let's continue again. We'll come back when that's finished. And there we go, we're finished. So we might as well just restart. And we'll see it'll go straight into Windows. There we go, straight into Windows. We'll let it boot up and we'll have a look at the disk management utility. And this is because Grub is on the other drive and the machine is set to boot off the Windows drive. So we're booting into Windows. So we either need to interfere with that process with the boot menu key at the uh, point where we turn the computer on. Or of course we can go into the BIOS and actually change the drive that it boots from by default. So let's have a look at Windows. So we'll right click the start button and we'll go to disk management. So disk zero, still got the C drive on it, untouched, and here we are running Windows, so Windows is untouched. 
and there's our disk one with Linux on it. Windows cannot read the Linux file system. The only thing Windows can see here is a healthy active primary partition. That's all it knows. But let's restart. Again, interrupt the restart by pressing the F12 key, which will bring up the boot menu. There we go. Now yours is going to look a lot different. And as I mentioned before, I'm doing this in a virtual environment, but the steps on my actual physical hardware are pretty much the same. So we can see here we've got disk one, hard disk one, and we have hard disk two. So Windows is on hard disk one, and Linux is on hard disk two. Now these will probably show up if you're actually looking at the BIOS of your motherboard, then if that's a Western Digital, for example, it'll show up as a Western Digital 130 gigabyte drive, whatever it might be. And this one will show up as whatever it is. But here they're just showing up simply as one and two. So if I press the two button on my keyboard, we should get the grub menu. And there we can see it's defaulting to Linux Mint. And down the bottom, we can see Windows 10, and you'll notice it says Windows 10 on device SDA1. So it's on SDA. The grub menu is not telling us that Linux is actually on SDB, or disk, the second disk, or as Windows calls it, disk 1, because Windows sees itself on disk 0. But nonetheless, there's our uh, boot menu, and this is why I do it on my own actual hardware. I've got Windows and Linux on separate hard drives, and I use Grub to get across to Windows by doing that on my system. And as I mentioned before, the reason is if either drive dies, the other one's pretty much unaffected by it. And that's the reason we have to change in the BIOS, if you want to boot into Grub each time, you'll have to change in the BIOS which drive the machine's going to look at first to boot up. So by default, most machines will be booting straight into Windows and straight on the what's effectively the first drive in the system, which is where Windows is typically installed. There's no reason you can't leave it like that and just use the menu key, uh, just use the key to bring up your boot menu each time you start the computer if, if you want to go into Linux or just let it boot into Windows. So it just depends how you want to do it. This is the way I do it on my system. Um, but yeah, there's, there's plenty, of, plenty of different ways to do it. So let's boot into uh, Linux. There we are in Linux Mint. We'll have a look at the disk utility again. There's the 130 gigabyte Windows drive. There's Windows. Here's the 64 gigabyte hard drive, which we're currently on with Linux on it. And you can see it's mounted at file system root because this is the system that we're actually running on right at this moment. At this point, the only thing to do is to go into your BIOS and change the boot to the second disk, or in this case to the, the 64 gigabyte one, or you can leave it as it is, as I said before, and just choose if you want to boot into Linux, press your uh, boot menu key on the, on the keyboard as you start the computer and choose it that way just depends what you want to do. This is a, a second scenario that might apply, is that you've got a, a second drive already on your Windows system, and in this case it's called data, drive D, 
So there's our C drive, this is our D drive. And there's D drive here. We can see it's got some files on it. We go to its properties. It's got 11 gigabytes used and there's 48 gigabytes free. So this is the same 64 gigabyte drive that we had previously or 60 gigs, whatever it's showing up as there. And here's some of the files on it. So there's a video there. And as you can see, we can play the video. So this time what we're going to do is we're gonna shrink this volume down shrink the size of this and we're going to put Linux up the end here on about a 30 gigabyte partition. So it's using 11 gigabytes, it's 60 so that'll be about half and half so we'll go and do that and see how this turns out. Once again we boot up to the live Linux session desktop so that we can install it. Once again we're at the live session desktop so we'll have a look at disks and here's our Windows hard drive. There we can see it's 130 gigabytes, it's NTFS. And we can see this is the data drive from Windows, 64 gigabytes. We know it's got a little bit of data down here about 11 gigs so let's go and shrink that down and get it ready so we hit the menu and we type G parted and there it is this is the partition editor in Linux Mint just give it a moment to load And it's currently looking at the Windows itself there because it's SDA, 120 gigabytes, NTFS, so we know that's the Windows uh, system there with Windows on it. So we're looking for SDB, and here it is up here, SDA, SDB. This is the petition that we're interested in here. We can see the yellow represents the 11 gigabytes of data that's on there, and we want to preserve that and the NTFS file system. So we click on the petition. We go petition, resize, move. And we can just drag it from the end here. Like that. Or you can even, you can just use these here or type directly in there. Like that. So at this point, we just want to shrink it down. So the new size is 30,000 megabytes or about 30 gigabytes. And this free space following is about the same size there, 31. So that's close enough for what we're doing here. So let's hit resize move. And there we see, so now we hit the little check mark to perform the operation and we go apply. As usual, there's always the risk of something going wrong when you're installing or resizing, moving petitions around, that sort of thing. So that looks like it worked successfully. We can close out of there. We could do more petitioning here, but we'll do it all from the installer. Now we've got 30 gigabytes here to put Linux in. So we can close out of there. And we can start the installer once again. and we'll work our way up to the appropriate section. Okay, once again, it's discovered Windows 10 on the computer and it's offering to install alongside, which is not what we want to do. So again, we choose something else and we continue. Once again, there's SDA. With SDA1 with Windows 10, 120 gigabytes is our SDB, 
The orange represents the NTFS petition with the data for Windows, which is there. So here's our free space, which is this section up the end here. So once again, we hit the plus, we click on the free space, and we hit the plus, and we're just going to run with most of the default settings. Just the mount point is going to be that forward slash. And it's going to be a logical. We could make it primary, but it's saying make it a logical, so we'll just run with that. And we'll go OK. Again, we're going to put the Grub Bootloader, device for bootloader installation. So this will be the Grub menu. We're going to put that on SDB. And we're going to click Install Now. And continue. And we've entered some details. We'll continue again. We'll let that finish and come back and have a look at the results. We are finished, so we'll restart. Once again, it'll go straight into Windows, which we'll let it do. And we'll check our data, see if we can play our video. Okay, well, we'll look at the disk management first. And now we can see this D drive. You can see it's a little bit shorter than it was. And this is Linux up here. This is our C drive, which we're currently operating from, obviously. That's all looking good there. Have a look at the file manager. Go to D drive. Let's see. Files look like they're still there. And there's the video playing. So Windows is happy. Let's go and have a look at uh, Linux. And remembering once again that I'm going to press F12 to bring up the boot menu, which we've done. And I'm going to press number two again. Once again, we get the Grub boot menu with Windows and Linux on it. So let's try Linux. Welcome to Linux Mint. Let's have a look at disks. There's the 120 gigabyte, 130 gig, there's Windows, NTFS. This is the D drive in Windows. There's the D drive there, the data partition, NTFS. And this is just an extended partition because this one here is actually a logical partition now. And this is where Linux is that we're currently on. So when I click on this, you'll see mounted at file system root down here. This is the system we're actually on right now. And it's just under this extended partition. So there's all our drives and partitions. I'll open the file manager. And we know that uh, data is where the, the files were. So let's, there's that video there. This is the video we were playing before on Windows. So let's give that a click and see what happens. And there's our video playing on Linux. And we can see that there's currently 19.3 gigabytes of free space on that data drive.
So that's scenario number two, I guess you could call that, where you've got an existing drive that you've been using in your Windows system as a data storage, and you've got enough free space on it to bang Linux in there somewhere. And that's a way of doing that. There's obviously lots of other different things you can do. If you disconnected your Windows drive from the computer by pulling the cable out of it or removing it from your laptop while you installed Linux using any of these methods that I've just shown here, you can run this command that's currently sitting there in the terminal, which is sudo space update dash grub. You press enter, put in your password, press enter again. We should see it find Windows here in a moment. So there we go, found Windows 10 on device SDA1. So that should update Grub to allow you to use Grub to boot either Windows or Linux, as you've seen when I've pressed uh, my F12 key. Pressing F12 here, because I'm doing this in a virtual environment, looks quite a bit different than what you're probably going to see. But it, it does give us the choice here of which uh, hard disk we want to boot off. In this case, I'm going to choose two. And there's our Windows and Linux both in the Grub menu there. So we can boot to, to Linux or we can boot to Windows. So that's how you can update Grub in the instance where you've actually disconnected or removed the Windows 10 drive from the machine while you are installing Linux. Ideally, you would also change the boot order in the BIOS or the motherboard to look for the drive, the 60 gig drive in this case with Linux Mint on it. And it'll find the grub menu there and you can just use this to boot either Windows or Linux Mint. Or you can just let it default to booting into Windows if that suits your your use case more and just press the boot menu key when you want to bring this up and start Linux that way. As usual there's risks with uh, doing things of this nature. So the onus is on you. I'm just showing how I set my systems up. Some of the stuff that I do and um, what you want to do and what suits you could well be something quite a bit different than what I do. So there's two different ways of installing Linux onto a separate drive than your Windows system. And um, enjoy. <laughs>